Hello and welcome to the introduction talk for Analog Electronics and Physics Lab 9, Reactive Networks Part 2. The main point of this lab is to measure and compare against theoretical prediction six frequency response circuits detailed in the lab book. Now, first, how do you measure a frequency response? Well, most simply, you take the function generator, configure it to give a sine wave output, and then split that output sine wave from the function generator in two, which can conveniently be done with a BNC T-piece. Uh, you then feed half of it into the circuit under test, the network that you're trying to determine the frequency response of, and the other half of it you take directly to the oscilloscope channel. You take the output of the circuit under test then to the other oscilloscope channel. Now we have channel 1 on the oscilloscope being the input to the circuit, and channel 2 is the output of the circuit, so comparing the amplitudes and the phases of channel 1 and channel 2 gives you the amplitude and phase response, in other words, the frequency response, of your network at that frequency. In order to do this efficiently, again, the technique would be to measure at 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 100 hertz, 1, 1 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz, and then go back and take some more measurements anywhere where the plotted curves are doing something interesting. In other words, not lying on just straight lines. And you'll notice that between 1 hertz and 10 kilohertz here, we're sticking very much to the audio frequencies for these measurements. Now, there's just one problem with doing this. Uh, well, there's two problems, really. Uh, one problem is that it takes quite a long time, since we've got six different circuits to investigate. And the other problem is that we don't have an ideal voltage source. The function generator is not a perfect voltage source. It has a 50 ohm output impedance. And we don't have a infinite impedance ideal voltmeter either. The oscilloscope does not have an infinite input impedance. What we've actually got is something more like this. A 50 ohm output impedance from our function generator and our oscilloscope, something like a 1 meg in parallel with 60 picofarads uh, input impedance of our scope. So in effect, if we were trying to measure the frequency response of this network with just the 1k and 1 nanofarad capacitor, we're actually measuring the frequency response of everything inside this blue rectangle, um, which is going to give us a systematic error in our measurements. Now, the other problem I mentioned is that it can take quite a long time to measure individually by hand enough points to plot smooth frequency responses for all six networks that we're investigating in this lab. It would be nice if we could automate this process somehow. Um, and we can do that using the VAM connected to the PC. All you have to do is write a suitable program for the computer, which outputs sine waves of different frequencies through the VAM, sends, in this case, the left channel out from the VAM through the circuit under test back into the left input and loops back the right output from the VAM back into the right input. Then, since we're sending out the same signal from the left and the right stereo channels, what we read in from the right channel is the input to the circuit under test and from the left channel is the output from the circuit under test. So just by looking at the difference between the right and left stereo channels, we can determine the frequency response of the circuit under test. Only slight problem with this is that the output impedance of the VAM and the input impedance of the VAM are even worse than the function generator and the oscilloscope. For the VAM output, it looks something more like this with an ideal voltage source, the op-amp, driving through a 100 ohm resistor and 22 microfarad capacitor before it leaves the VAM. And on the input side, 
the input to the VAM is really nothing like an infinite impedance. It's really quite a complicated um, circuit. We'll, we'll study this circuit a bit later on, this term. So, we need some method whereby we can take readings only of the test circuit not affected by the output impedance of the VAM or the input impedance of the VAM inputs. And the solution to this is buffers. If I add a couple of little op-amp buffers like that, then the input to my test circuit is being driven by an ideal voltage source. Remember, an ideal op-amp has a zero output impedance. And the output from my test circuit is driving into what is effectively an infinite in input impedance. Remember, an ideal op-amp has an infinite input impedance. So this circuit here allows me to determine the frequency response of the test circuit without the effect of the VAM output impedance or the VAM input impedance getting in the way. This means that we have to build the buffers. Well, here's an example build of suitable buffers built on a bit of breadboard. Um, this is a smaller breadboard than you have in the labs, but the same principle applies. It works in much the same way. Uh, things to remember. The signal from the VAM output will have a signal and ground. And it's important that that ground is connected to the 0 volt power supply coming from the uh, lab power supply unit as well. I've powered my dual op amps here, uh, TL072s I used from plus or minus 12 volts and ground from the lab power supply. Um, there is a preset in the simulator. You can find it here under AEP Spring Labs preset uh, group. It's called Lab 9 Buffers. It contains suitable buffers um, and you can do the layout on the breadboard and check the design if you're unsure. But once you've got this built and working, taking the measurements of the six networks for this lab should be really quite quick. I would strongly recommend you watch the other videos as well before trying to do the build or any of the measurements. Uh, there's one video about how to do the hardware in a bit more detail, um, and another video about how to use the software. Now, I should apologize that both of these videos were made about five years or so, and they're a little bit out of date. Uh, the VAM-based audio network analyzer, the hardware, refers to a previous generation of the VAM board, uh, one that actually was powered from plus or minus 12 volts rather than the uh, single rail power supply that the current generation of the VAM has. And some of the details in that video are not up to date. Uh, similarly, the software video was written for Windows 7. It should be easier under Windows 10. Uh, the details of which parts of these videos are no longer up to date are on the lab wiki. So make sure you read the wiki page while or after you watch those videos. But full details of how to use the software are, are in that video. Most common things that go wrong, not connecting the power supply to the buffers or connecting it wrong. Remember, there's a document about how to get plus or minus 12 volts from the lab power supplies in the wiki page for the previous lab. Uh, hopefully most of you will have got some experience in how to do that by now. It's just the same for this lab. Remember that it's the output from the VAM, the VAM output that goes to the input of your network and the output of your network goes to the VAM input. Do use the Weiss-shaped stereo splitters, the one with one red socket and one black socket in them. Uh, and it's the red socket that is being fed by the signal that should go through your buffers and your external network. Um, sometimes 
people have had problems with the switch block connections on the VAM. It's important that these switches are in the right place to take this measurement. Details in the lab script. If something goes wrong, try toggling the switches up and down a bit. That sometimes fixes it. Um, and if Windows loses connection to the VAM, well, there is a, a button on the software labeled something like Reset Audio Devices. Press that and just start again if you find that you can get signal through your external network. You can see it on the scope, for example, but the um, software doesn't seem to be picking up those signals. Try resetting the audio devices and starting again. OK, that's the first lab intro talk done. Only point I will mention is if all else fails, then there is a set of um, readings that I've taken for these six networks that you can just load into the software and analyze them. But that is very much a last resort. Much better if you can take these measurements yourself. Good luck.